So do you need a custom PC for video editing? Maybe, but in order to answer that question or even start to answer that question, we need to do a little story time. Let's take a look. This has been rendering for two hours. It's a six minute long video and there's still an hour to go. What is going on right now? The first computer I ever used for editing was this old refurbished HP Envy X360 laptop. Well, actually I started on a Chromebook, but we don't talk about that. And despite its eight gigabytes of RAM, dual core CPU, and old outdated NVIDIA GeForce GTX 930M GPU, it did okay for a while. Now it's my four-year-old's learning laptop. Here's the thing, and this applies to basically any skill that involves tools. At a certain point, in order to keep growing your skills, you need the tools that will allow you to do that. And the more I learned about editing, the more I wanted to try and do, the more obsolete this laptop became. I was quickly approaching the point where I wasn't going to be able to keep improving with the tools that I had this little guy just wasn't cutting it anymore. Fast forward to this past February, Super Bowl Sunday to be exact, my current computer was dropped in my lap and it was a huge upgrade from the last. I mean, we're talking twice the RAM, better GPU, better CPU, three times the VRAM, you get the idea. And for a while, this laptop has been more than enough to get the job done, but now, things are changing a little bit. First of all, once again, I'm wanting to do more. And while my computer can technically handle everything I'm doing, the render times are getting a bit out of hand and I'm finding myself having to clear my RAM every so often so my computer doesn't completely lock up on me. On top of that, we've had some pretty big camera releases recently. You've got the R5, the R6, the A7S III, the new Ursa Mini Pro, and before any of those, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Basically higher resolutions and and other things like 10-bit RAW are becoming more and more accessible at the consumer or at least the prosumer level. This means that one, NLEs are going to have to have the power in their software to support that footage. And if you're doing client projects like I am, the likelihood of having to edit heavier footage is even greater. And that got me thinking, is it time to upgrade again? Yay. Okay, hi. <laughs> Back in July, I got a chance to hop on a call with a company called Puget Systems. They make custom PCs for things like gaming, video editing, and basically whatever you need. And they make them for people like me who aren't really knowledgeable enough to know what would work well together, what you actually need, and how to put it all together. I mean, I used to fix medical equipment, so I'm sure I could figure that part out, but I don't really have the tools or a static-free environment. and. Electronics can be finicky, so I figured I should leave it to the professionals. Knowing your limits is important, right? So I'm on this call and I'm telling Wilson, did I forget to mention the consultant's name was Wilson? His name is Wilson. Awesome dude, super nice. Back to the story. So I'm telling Wilson what I do with my computer, video editing, photo editing, live streaming, stuff like that. And based on what I told him, he suggested a system that was optimized for DaVinci Resolve and not just DaVinci Resolve, but specifically for DaVinci Resolve Studio. He went over each part and explained to me exactly what it did and why he was recommending it. I was totally blown away. I mean, Wilson answered questions that I didn't even know I had. Like, did you know that Thunderbolt 3 is actually an Intel technology and that there isn't really a reliable alternative for Ryzen processors. And so if you're using stuff that connects via Thunderbolt 3, you're better off with an Intel CPU. I didn't, I had no idea. That actually kind of blew my mind. So based on what I do now, what I would like to do and what I want to be prepared for, Wilson was able to tell me exactly what he thought I needed. But back to the original question, do I really need it? Do I really need 64 gigabytes of RAM, a 14 core CPU, two eight gigabyte GPUs, a super quiet fan, multiple internal hard drives? Well, we're gonna find out. Seriously, we're gonna find out. As you're watching this, that new system is on its way here and I'm gonna spend the next several weeks comparing it to my laptop and determining not only how well it performs, but how much time it saves me. And I'm going to be doing a lot of videos about it. This should be fun. Now that call with Puget Systems didn't happen because I'm special or because I'm a YouTuber with a decent sized audience. Uh, anyone can schedule a call and have them help you determine what you need in order to do whatever it is you do, especially video editing. They have some systems for both Resolve and Premiere that are just 
just wow. The call's free and there's no obligation to buy anything. So if you want to figure out what you might need in a custom PC, I'll leave a link in the description. It's not even an affiliate link. So there you go. So back to my original question, do you need a custom PC for video editing? Maybe not yet, but I honestly think that the way things have been going in both the NLE world and the camera world, the days of being able to edit on a laptop might be numbered, but for now, as long as your computer meets the system requirements of whatever program you're using, you should be okay, as long as you're not doing anything too crazy. Actually, I just made a video comparing the system requirements of DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. To check that out, click here, and for more tools, tips, and tricks that will make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.